So again, welcome and thank you everyone for joining on for our training session this afternoon. This is the third uh, Kenworth Northeast Training Academy session we've done this fall. Um, and we're really excited to be here today with uh, Mike Dumont from Road Warrior. We're going to talk about emissions, DPFs, DPF uh, regen failure, and how we can uh, hopefully avoid it. <laughs> so, there we go. Um, so again, myself, um, Melinda McAuliffe, I work for Kenworth Northeast and the Director of Marketing here. You've probably seen the emails coming out from me uh, for the sessions. And if you have any questions about future sessions, feel free to reach out. They're also available on our website too. And then, oh, Mike, I apologize. It looks like I um, spelled your name wrong on the slide. All right. We don't judge. We don't judge, okay. And for some reason, I've got some goofy things happening here. That's the French way. It's the French way? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the French, French yeah, Canadian way? Tea. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you have questions throughout, you can go ahead and drop them in the Q&A and we'll keep an eye out for those questions. Or like I mentioned, if uh, you know Mike makes a pause and you'd like to ask a question, you can go ahead and unmute yourselves. Just ask that you do remute your mic afterwards to reduce background noise. And then also, um, as we're going through the presentation, you want to turn off your camera so that way we can reduce those visual distractions as well. Um, I'm not really sure why. I've never had this happen before. I keep getting my slides kicked off. Um, all right, here we go. So um, just to give you a quick preview before we get started, 2023, we've got six other sessions that are lined up. In January, we'll be with the folks from Milton Cat. Um, and then you'll see the list here, February through June, we have um, sessions that are scheduled as well. Following this meeting, I will be um, sending an email out to folks to give you the information about those sessions and where you can go to sign up. So with that, I think that's what I had for now. Yep, Mike, I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Perfect. Can you guys hear me okay? You can hear me, Melinda? I can hear you, yep. Perfect. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, I just want to say thanks for taking the time uh, and joining this session. Um, I'm going to just share the screen here if it'll work. You guys can see the presentation? Yes. So I'm seeing it in the um, PowerPoint mode. Perfect, and you can just see the there you go. Kenworth Northeast training slide. Yep. Perfect, so my name's Mike, I'm from Road Warrior. Uh, I currently handle the Northeast US and all of Ontario, Canada, where everything is made. I am transitioning over to the West US, West Canada, but I will be a, you know, a main contact here um, to help for this, this program. Uh, throughout the years. Um, we'll get into it, a little bit about DCL uh, and Road Warrior, what we do uh, for the Emission Control Department and how we can help you uh, solve the problems that you're facing that Melinda outlined. So we'll get into that. So just a little bit about DCL and Road Warrior. Uh, you may be familiar with Road Warrior, you may be using our stuff now. Uh, we're part of the DCL group of companies. We've been making catalysts for over 30 years in the underground mining industry. We have a lot of expertise in that mining industry um, and we carried it over to the trucking industry in uh, 2007 and 2011 when it really started to pick up. So we already had that technology uh, from our on highway division, sorry, off highway division, but we decided to get into the class 60 truck market because it was just something that we could easily step into. Because if you know anything about the mining industry, um, the emissions are very important for anything that's underground. There might be a little bit of delay, guys, so hopefully the, the pages uh, switch quickly. I'm just going to quickly uh, exit this for a brief moment uh, to show a little video so it's not as choppy. And this will uh, sum it up quickly for you guys. You see that, Melinda? Hey, 
Hey, Mike, I'm not hearing the audio on that. Did you do the share audio? Sorry, guys. Let me uh, try that again. After treatment components are some of the most that complicated better, guys? systems yep. in the heavy duty industry, creating huge expenses for drivers and fleets and challenging even the most experienced technicians. Meanwhile, OEMs make it harder to satisfy your customers with core charges, overpriced reman parts, rejected cores, and warranty complications. When it comes to after treatment, Road Warrior has you covered. We are heavy duty industry leaders with SCR and one box designs. Our metal core catalyst technology exceeds OEM specs and improves efficiency. Our parts are engineered with serviceability in mind, extending service life so you can provide your customers with the best value. Road Warriors catalog of in-stock DPF, DOC and SCR components for all mix is always expanding and we're the only manufacturer to support trucks, buses and off-highway construction equipment. 10 warehouses strategically placed across North America we offer free same day pickup and next day delivery on our most requested parts. So you can be sure Road Warrior will get your customers back on the road. Covering all makes, our team of experts are ready to serve you by providing remote or in-person training, troubleshooting steps and next day availability. We can help you maximize the value of your after treatment service for your customers, making you more money. So hopefully that played okay for you guys. Can you guys hear me, Melinda? Yes. Perfect. Yes, that played well. Yeah. I didn't zoom out uh, on that video because I thought it might have been better quality. So hopefully that worked out. So we saw that. We skip the slide. After treatment component. There we go. So like I mentioned, guys, we were born off highway. Um, Road Warrior was the first and continues to be the only leader uh, with the trucks, buses, and equipment. We have the largest parts catalog available for you. Uh, even some of the older stuff, if you have some of the older trucks as well, we have a great catalog for that. Um, we also have some newer stuff for the EPA 17 designs. And if you guys have uh, some construction equipment, we have about 30 30 parts, I would say, uh, for John Deere, Cat, Kimatsu, uh, and that's expanding catalog for us as well. And again, we're part of the DCL group of companies making catalysts for over 35 years. So we have the expertise in the canning, the matting, and the platinum group of metal technology. So in 2018, uh, we moved to a new facility. We were in the greater Toronto area, uh, but we moved about 45 minutes north uh, to further expand and support uh, the emission control um, sector. Uh, very thankful that we did that because during COVID, uh, we didn't have any shutdowns because we were in about a plant that was uh, a third of the size of where we are now. So I'm sure we would add some some shutdowns. Um, so I'm very thankful that you know we moved and we didn't have that and we were able to supply um, hopefully some of your clients, um, some of you guys with our parts to keep you guys up and running. So as I mentioned, uh, when it comes to manufacturing, uh, everything's made here north of uh, Toronto, Canada. Uh, we use the highest materials uh, possible to make sure that we're you know, giving you the price point that you need, the quality that you deserve compared to the OEM, and also make some uh, product improvements. Our units are always brand new. They're no core charge with a one-year warranty, just like the OEM. Uh, we're here to support you guys if you do have issues, even outside of this presentation, um, hopefully you gather a little bit of uh, info that you can bring back to your fleet or your clients and help help them out. Um, you can always reach out to me directly uh, or the new manager that will be in that territory. And we'll be even give you more one-on-one -on -one training and more support through, you know, the product reps at Kenworth Northeast, uh, as well as Road Warrior. We'll just uh, skip this one because we talked about it. We do have 12 warehouses now, so this will kind of give you the size of, um, you know, what we do as, as a group of companies. We're fully invested in the emissions control uh, division and, and we're a leader in it. Uh, we make a great part. We have great customer service. 
uh, and we make a great product to make sure that we have the support uh, through the Kenworth Northeast as well as your clients. So it's something that you can really believe in. If we don't have it here in uh, in the PA warehouse, you typically would pull from Toronto, Canada, because it's just quicker. That way we don't like to pull from another warehouse if, if something's closer. So we try to get you those parts as quick as possible. The one benefit of having uh, the Canadian and uh, North American um, manufacturing is that we don't have to wait for timelines uh, to get product from overseas. Everything's made here. We really take pride in that, um, you know, the, the craftsmanship of our product. Are we perfect? No, things are going to happen. UPS at this time here, especially if you do get one of our products and there is a bent flange, thank your UPS driver today. Um, <laughs> but we'll get you a new part as fast as we can to get you back on the road. So things do happen out there. So we'll get into the meat and potato side of things now. We're going to get into some terminology just in case some people don't know, uh, you know, some of the specs uh, that you're going to hear out there. Um, I know you guys, some of you guys may know this, but this is it. Uh, I just want to go over it so that kind of everyone's on the same page to kind of help everyone out to better understand the whole system. So first we have the, the dock or the DOC or the diesel oxidation catalyst. Then we have the DPF. This is what gets the bad wrap and shuts down the truck, but it doesn't really do anything except collect the garbage. We'll get into that a little bit later, but um, you know, this is what basically shuts down the truck. Then you have the SCR, the Selective Catalyst Reduction System. This was added on into the trucks in 2010 for the most part. Uh, we'll get into that. And then we have uh, the DEF or DEF fluid or diesel exhaust fluid. This is a urea mixture. And then we have the EGR, which is the exhaust gas recirculation. So those are a couple basics of the terminology um, that you guys should know or under understanding of it. And then we have two types of regeneration uh, in the after treatment system. First, we have passive regeneration. This is the primary sort or the preferred source of regeneration, and we call it free regeneration. You know, this relies on the heat of the exhaust gases to get the job done. And the DOC is the backbone and heart of this whole passive regeneration, even the active regeneration. It controls how that after treatment system works. So with its platinum group of metals, coating on the DOC along with the exhaust gases to oxidize the soot. This is what keeps the truck on the road. Next, you have active regeneration. Now, exactly what says it's active. This is a paid regeneration. This is used on low duty cycles, whether it's uh, you know, a bus or stop and starts on a garbage truck, uh, anything that's low duty cycle or just going stop, stop, stop. Unfortunately, on these, on these applications that are stop and start, the exhaust gases don't get up to the correct uh, the correct exhaust temperatures. The correct exhaust temperatures, so that a backup system has to come into play, and that backup system is the active regeneration. This is where you're going to spray raw diesel fluid in front of that DOC through the HC dozer, and it's going to artificially spike that temperature, regenerating that DPF. This should be avoided at all times. And it's a really good indication, guys, if you start seeing the active regenerations starting to become the primary source of regeneration, that you have a weak DOC. And we'll get into that on the next slide. Because again, the DOC, and you'll hear me talk about it, and I'm sorry that it's repetitive, but the DOC is the heart and soul of this whole system, along with a healthy engine upstream that regenerates the DPF and helps out the, um, the NOx conversion downstream with the SCR. So this next slide is a little bit windy, so you know we'll try to get through it the best as possible and it's not, uh, not too, uh, uh, too boring on you. Uh, we'll just go over the main part here. We got the engine, we got the EGR, the DOC, the DPF, and the HC dozer. This is on the first generation setup, so uh, the um, 07 to 09. And in 2010, we didn't make anything uh, easier. All we did is make it a little bit more complicated and cost a lot more money if something goes wrong. And that we added the DEF dozer and the SCR. The DEF dozer and the DEF fluid work in combination uh, with the SCR to reduce those NOx targets. So basically, there's a chemical reaction that happens in all three processes. The DEF fluid is uh, sprayed into the front of the SCR 
It mixes with the exhaust gases and basically goes through the catalysts that are in there and out the exhaust gas closest thing to water. The SCRs are on 2010 to current trucks, uh, Navistar and Max Force in 20, uh, 2009 decided to go with a supersized EGR. And what happened with that was, I'm sure you guys are aware if you're in the industry, um, it wasn't well for them where they almost went, uh, they almost went bankrupt. So not bankrupt, but they lost a lot of market share. So I shouldn't say that, apologize. Um, and that's where they're back now. But as of 2011, everyone is running SCR technology. So the exhaust gases uh, leave the engine, go through the EGR, they go through the H, um, go through the DOC, they go through the DPF, a chemical reaction happens in simple terms, sprayed with DEF fluid, it goes through the SCR and goes out the exhaust with uh, a chemical reaction, closest thing to water. The DOC is the heart and backbone of this, guys. If you were to look at it like this, if you were to put your garbage out today and it didn't get picked up, what would you do? The DPF is the garbage can. We put it out on the street and it doesn't get picked up. Who are we going to blame? We're not going to blame the garbage can for not taking out the garbage. Now the garbage is the soot, the ash, the byproduct that gets stuck there. It's the DOC. The DOC is responsible for cleaning out that DPF. And when that doesn't happen, you're going to get face plugging. You're going to get... Um, a DPF that's going to crack, it's going to fail uh, internally, it's going to have an um, uncontrollable regeneration. And then on the on the EPA 13 trucks, when you have the SCR technology, the SCRs are going to start getting interrupted. They're going to have NOx conversion codes. They're going to they're going to get uh, contaminated as well. And those are the things that we want to try to avoid. So we have a lot of unhealthy trucks out there right now that have a weak DOC and you should be able to, uh, you know, pinpoint that and look at the regeneration history to see what is going on with that truck. So that's, you know, a simple, um, simple schematic of the after treatment components. Um, and then we'll get into it uh, one by one. So this is the diesel oxidation catalyst or DOC. Again, this is the backbone um, of the whole after treatment component. Um, this is responsible for the DPF performance. So on our DOCs, they're gonna look a little bit different than an OEM one. Ours are brazed and braced and made with a metallic core, uh, metallic uh, substrate. Where on the OEM ones, I'm just gonna switch to the next slide. This one here, the OEM uses a substrate similar to what the DPF is. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. And the reason why OEMs don't do it uh, on a metallic um, substrate is that it costs money to do it. But on the off highway, and since we're in an integrated company, um, we use a metallic coating. So you're going to burn less fuel. We're going to reduce the engine back pressure uh, over uh, versus a ceramic substrate. And then the whole point of this is it's going to get hotter. It's more durable, it's more shock absorbent, and it's gonna improve DPF uh, regeneration. So this is the heart and backbone of it. So we have a premium DOC um, to help improve the whole after treatment um, steps. When is it? When should I replace the DOC, guys? I'm sure you've seen some melted DOCs in your day. Obvious signs of damage to the substrate. You got cracking, soot, face plugging, any EGR, uh, coolant leaks or blown turbos that leak into the exhaust stream that go deep into the DPF, automatically uh, change your DOC. You can go get them cleaned, like I'm sure the whole process you've gone through. The only thing that the DPF cleaner can advise is that he's cleaned the DPF and there's no more face plugging or soot or any contaminants that are there. There's a platinum group of metals on there, guys, that and girls that help regenerate the DPF and when those get contaminated from the, the chemicals that are in the coolant and oil, it deactivates or poisons the DPF. If you start seeing the force regen uh, starting to become the primary source of regeneration and hopefully you guys know how to do that, but if you don't, what you're going to start monitoring is the temp one and temp temp two sensor. You're going to look for a, a rise in temperature or over a 45 to an hour times and make sure that it completes it. This is gonna tell you that, hey, 
one, my DP or my DOC is still good enough to regenerate the DPF. And two, it's not going to regenerate. And if it doesn't regenerate, it's a good indication that as long as you fixed everything upstream, like dozers, seventh injectors, exhaust leaks, that you need a new DOC. So when you start seeing that uh, active regeneration becoming the primary source, it's a good indication that you need to um, switch out that DOC. And the worst thing that you guys could do is purchase a reman DOC. A reman DOC is a used DOC that's been put through an exchange program and you put it on your truck. And we'll talk about uh, the reman program for DPFs, which is very similar. Um, the DPF one, I could, okay, it's convenient and work, but since the DOC is the heart and backbone of your whole system, if you have an issues net with it now and you trade it in and you get another one back for, that was traded in for the same issues, why would you do that? You're going to be in the same boat, if not even worse, in a matter of time. So we just want to make sure that we're checking the temp one, temp two sensor, and checking the regen uh, history to make sure you're still in line. If you haven't started doing it yet, when we get into the triage side of things, um, you really want to make sure that you start documenting that, or at least have a good indication of what's going on. Next, we're going to go into the DPF. If it wants to change pages. There we go. So the DPF guys, again, exactly what I said. Uh, the DPF gets a bad rap, it shuts down the truck um, and derates you guys. And everyone blames the, the DPF. But again, the DPF is main job is to be a garbage can. It collects everything. It doesn't do anything else but that. So you need the DOC to regenerate the DPF. So when you have an issue, ask the question, well, what's my regen history like? You know what's going on sometimes there is a manufacturing issue whether it's an oem or our product that does happen and we can identify that pretty quickly but nine times out of ten something upstream has caused that issue on our dpfs uh, we use um, a great technique with our matting and our canning um, a little bit different than the oem uh, we actually um, I'm just tr sorry, guys, I'm trying to word it correctly, but uh, we use a canning technique that we don't rely on the matting technology that's in there, as well as the canning to hold the parts together. So it's not going to expand and contrast. We don't use the, the canning technique to hold that filter into place. We built it, ensure that it's going to work. So along with its platinum group of metal uh, coating that's on there, similar to on the DOC, it's going to regenerate the DPF and have better performance over a reman filter. Come on, switch. There we go. Why do does why do DPFs fail? Well, they fail for a number of reasons, right? One, not uh, understanding how the after treatment system works. Soot and ash build up on the inside of that DPF filter. Um, we don't do. Uh, we're seeing an increase in active regenerations, but it's not the DOC isn't powerful enough to regenerate the DPF. Ash over time continues to build up inside of that filter and it needs to be removed by DPF cleaning. And sometimes people prolong that DPF cleaning or some people still have the original filter on a 10 year old truck and they need to uh, put a new one on. And then what happens as well is in a matter of time, you know, if you don't have a great DOC, the back pressure is going to increase because it can't regenerate and it's going to crack the filter, right? Because there's a soot loading capacity that works with the ECM. And once it gets full and the pressure reads that, hey, I need to be regen. And if it can't regen, all of a sudden it's going to stop and it's going to crack. Or we're going to see a small little fire inside of that, that filter. Obviously, low duty cycles, again, like I talked about in uh, the two types of regeneration. Idling should be avoided at all costs. They really do havoc on the system because you're going to keep spraying the raw diesel fluid in front of that DOC in order to burn off the DPF. In a little bit, you'll see a couple pictures of an uncontrollable regeneration. This is the right conditions and the right amount of pressure to start a small fire in that filter. And those are the things that you can't see. You know, something we bring filters back in and, and test them. I mean, why did they fail? Was there coding? What's going on? Because sometimes the OEM changes the platinum group of metal coating, and we need to make sure that we still um, we still keep up with the times. So we have to do that. 
And then obviously the low duty cycle and idling guys really wreak havoc on it. You know, some, some drivers now are avoiding since they can only run for 10 hours a day in some states, they're, they're not even starting their engine to, to idle because they only have so many times. That's a good thing um, because that idling just sitting there, it wreaks havoc. And we do have a new product as well uh, that we'll talk about. It's a lithium uh, battery for anyone that's running electrical APUs. We can reduce your uh, idle time by half and uh, build some comfort, but we'll get into that in a bit. So here's a, a few slides of what you might see when you look at it. On the left here, you got signs of excessive fuel, you got oil and coolant leaks, and then you have discoloration staining on the DPF face. Now, these are good indications of you know, what's going on upstream to give you a like, hey, you know, I clearly have something going on here and uh, let's take a look at uh, you know what's going on so if you see this guy's question yourself like wow i have something going on here i need to investigate it it's not the dpf that's feeling here right this is the engine and the after treatment system telling you hey let's look at a dozer from the staining it's all standing on one side maybe there's a dozer that's blocked well obviously i have a you know a coolant leak there and uh i can see it or if it's pink you can't really i'm not too sure if you can see the pink in that um, but that's a coolant leak that did a uncontrollable regeneration in that filter. So inside that filter, it's all, um, that's all melted and you'll see it on the next slide, I believe. So this is an uncontrollable regeneration. This is stuff that you can't see. This is the right, can, this filter is two weeks old with a damaged or a poison DOC. So we brought it back because the client didn't couldn't believe that it wasn't uh, our filter. We sent this away for analysis and it had uh, poisoning. So the exhaust gases, it was actually an engine contaminant on this, but the DOC wasn't working. The DOC was absolutely dead. No platinum group of metal coating on there. This is the right conditions. You can see with all the channels that are plugged, the exhaust has to go one. So in a DPF filter, one channel is open so the exhaust gases leave and the other one is blocked so that it pushes through the ceramic to collect the ash and byproduct and and so when the right conditions happen a small little fire uh, happens inside these filters and melt it so the filter has to get to over 2000 degrees to melt that substrate so we had a thermal event this could be very dangerous there's pictures that I got from DPF cleaners where they have a thermal uh, thermal gun and it's still there's still a fire going on in some of them. So these are the things that you can't see and it all relates back to the DOC. So there are some sophisticated tools uh, to determine if the DOC is damaged. However, they are expensive. But what you can do is you can do, you can visually inspect it. You saw in the other one, where you can see the coolant leaks, you can see the oil go through it. Um, you can see the cracks on a filter. If you flip it over uh, on the clean side, you'll be able to see if there's cracks. You can even see it if you blow it off. Now the exhaust, uh, the soot and the ash are very uh, not very great for our health. So you definitely want to wear, wear a mask. The other one is using a pin gauge test. You should always pin gauge test your filters before sending them out for cleaning because you'll be surprised. Um, some of these large cleaners just, you know, they, they pack it through the system and your, your filter might not get as clean as you think it is. So you should ping gauge it before it leaves and you should ping gauge it when it comes back to see if there's any identifying. And all it is is uh, uh, if you're looking at a welding rod, if the filter was 12 inches thick, there's plugs on the bottom of the filter that are quarter inch. So it, you could actually put the rod in and actually find the weak spots of that filter. If it only went down two inches, you know that filter is just packed full of soot and they didn't do a great job, or you actually be able to feel the cracks and they'd be like, oh, something's going on here. The third way to test the DPF is use a high lumen light, a bright flashlight, uh, like a work light, you know, like the new white lights that are on the new cars. If you were to take that flashlight and put it through either end of it, and you see light, exactly the same light as on the other side. Now there's something called DPF glow. If it's just the DPF glow, remember, if, some, if the light, if the exhaust gases go through, the light can also travel through. We're talking about that, that same bright light. If you see that, your DPF's cracked. This is a good indication, again, to start questioning that DOC. Sometimes not, the DOC could be healthy. 
um, and it just could be the time for a new filter. Like some of these trucks still have the original filter on it from 2010 and 11. I don't know how, but uh, we see it every day. And some of the pictures we get and stories we're told are, are incredible. So I'm talking about DPF cleaning. Uh, it's very important to the whole uh, the whole process to make sure that you keep your truck running as best as possible because we do have to clean out uh the incentered uh ash that's in there incentered means the stuff that's almost like plaque on your teeth it does have to get baked out some people uh, will only do the level one which is oil free compressed air they'll blow it out um, but we always recommend doing the bacon blow um, basically they're going to put it in a, in a thermal oven overnight and they're going to bring that temperature up bring that temperature down blow it out again and uh, you're back on your way the next step uh, in that cleaning process, there's also one out there, it's a liquid at ultrasonic cleaning. It's a liquid based cleaning system that they put it in a bath basically, and they blow it out, they put it in a bath with a, um, a chemical based solution. It pulses and vibrates. Um, turnaround time is a little bit quicker than your traditional bacon blow, but essentially does the same thing. So that's also a new one out there. What we recommend doing is getting a spare DOC and a DPF on the shelf, create a swing unit. What this is going to allow you to do is uh, create an exchange program for yourself. That one, you're going to know that you're getting a brand new unit. You're going to keep your DPF history intact and your DOC history intact. What you can do is change your DPF and DOC, maybe not the DOC every time, but you have one on the shelf if you're running all the same trucks that you can get them over to your cleaner. The truck's already gone. You have them sent back, put back on the shelf and create a, create a swing unit. If you have two or three different trucks, probably eight times out of 10, you're probably gonna run all the same truck uh, there. So you might only need the one set, but maybe you need two, depending on how big your fleet is. But I definitely recommend having that on the shelf in order to you know, improve your uptime. Next, we're gonna get into uh, the SCR. If you'll switch pages, sorry guys, I don't know uh, why the delay in that. So just like our DOCs, um, we use the metallic substrate in these over the OEM, which uses the substrate, uh, the courtier substrate, which is in the DPF. So again, you're going to get a premium SCR. It's going to burn. Um, it's not going to use as much death fluid because it's going to be able to run hotter. You're going to have a better chemical um, reaction and you're going to improve your whole uh, after treatment system just by having the metallic DOCs. Our, I keep talking about the platinum group of, uh, group of metals. On the DCL side of things are chemists and doctors that create the PGM coating for stationary generators at CAT uh, and many other companies um, in landfills, anything that runs uh, that needs a catalyst conversion. Those catalysts run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year with on-site testing. It's, it, with stronger gases that are going through it, it's the same technology that we're using on uh, all of our products. So you know that you're getting a great superior technology and you get passed on with this SCR. Uh, Cummins, um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but there was a warranty issue with Cummins. Uh, Cummins was basically giving them away for less than what we could make them. So we stopped gapped on some of the older ones and they're coming out with stuff that's uh, not included in that warranty configuration because um, we're also a, you know, a company that wants to make a profit and we don't give stuff away for free. So we're going to see a lot more SCRs coming out now. Uh, we have Volvo SCR, we have Detroit Diesel One boxes that you'll see as well. The problem with the SCR guys is we didn't make it any cheaper but when they added this right we actually just caused another problem for a lot of people and that knowledge doesn't get passed down to why they fail and on the next slide you'll see here some reasons why they fail is poor NOx uh, efficiency code too much NOx uh, is happening or not enough NOx is being created so one of the culprits is that since it relies on DEF fluid or the urea mixture one way to know if you guys have an SCR technology is if you're adding DEF fluid into their trucks uh, in all your fleet, you're running DEF quality, you're running DEF. Poor quality or expired uh, DEF fluid will trip a code 
the you should be monitoring the quality um, with a reader that uh, refractometer, and you should be monitoring that. Uh, there is a shelf life on uh, deaf quality. If it's in the sun in a big tote, it's supposed to last a year. But if you're in a big tote or you, you have a driver that has an emergency uh, deaf bucket uh, in the back, it's only good for a year. So if it's expired and you put it in it, it's going to derate your truck. There's lots of sensors and filters that also need to be uh, checked and changed as well. But for the most part, you can see here, uh, def crystallization and exhaust gas leaks are the culprit to derating your truck. And over time, what happens is, is that you poison the catalysts that are in the SCRs. So what we want to do is make sure that you can put a boroscope down, uh, down there if you wanted to, to inspect uh, any signs of def crystallization or def dozer failure. We know it's a pain to do it, but this is what's going to um, cause your trucks to, to derate. And we want to make sure that it's there. And if it's left undone for a long period of time, this is where you're going to start running into an expensive bill just to repair it. If you were to have you know, a blown a turbo that went through the whole system and made it to the SCR, that's an eighteen to twenty thousand dollar repair, which I'm sure some of you guys have. So we really need to take it serious. And you'll see that um, in the triage in a couple of slides that well, there's steps that we can take for some preventative maintenance, even some predictive maintenance that we can put into place. It does take time, but hopefully um, you guys can take something from it and improve your process. And then. The main thing, guys, here too is just make sure you're checking your def quality. You're changing the filters on the def tank. There's a there's a line filter as well that gets contaminated, and on some of the older uh, the older technology, there's a master kill switch. If your team is using that master kill switch when it's really hot, you're actually going to get uh, def fluid trapped in the lines. Def doesn't do well by itself; it'll actually crystallize in the lines, and the next thing you know, you you can't search, you can't find it, you can't see it. Def's not going anywhere, and it's a small one inch piece of crystallization in the line, even smaller, uh, that would have an effect on your whole system, which is often overlooked. So make sure we're checking that they're not using that master kill switch whenever possible, because um, you actually will hear that pump reverse. And if they hit that master kill switch when they shut the engine off, the urea gets straight into the line. So that's a, a little tidbit. We do have uh, knock sensors and def do dozers available as well. They're brand new, no core charge, and a one-year warranty as well. So those are available at uh, Canworth Northeast. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get into the fleet triage, and I hope you guys take something away with this. Uh, we are at one of the largest transit authorities here uh, in Toronto, and we were called in to make a, a cold, warm, and next steps process. So cold start, regen, and next steps. And I was able to be a part of it, and I put together um, the steps, and I think it's a great value that we can all take away and learn from and take something away from it. But it does take time to do it. But it gives you an indication on what's involved to make sure that we can lower your expenses on your after treatment system and keep your trucks on the road. So this is inspection in the cold engine start. One thing that we can do, visually inspect of uh, the def injectors and look for signs of crystallization in the mixing chamber. This is something that's done on a cold start. You want to check your def quality or contamination. Make sure that's at 32.5. Some people go up to 33. As uh, long as it's not over the 35, then and we're pretty good because it can go on both ends of the spectrum. EGR coolers, turbo injector history. Um, if the not if the DOC hasn't been replaced with pre-existing failures, look into replacing it. So the thought process here was they spent so much time uh, diagnosing it that they could have they could have bought a new DOC for the time and money it took to um, you know put a new DPF on it because there was a turbo leak or a, um, a coolant leak, but they didn't change the DOC. Nine times out of ten, if you have an EGR cooler. Uh, turbo injector, more on the turbo side of things, and it made its way to the DPF, that DOC in a matter of time will fail that brand new DPF uh, within two to three months. So if you do have the opportunity and you do have the resources to purchase the DOC, but if you have a failure, do it right away and put a new DPF on it. You'll thank us now uh, and not later. So 
if you have a truck that's always in and out of the shop, do an oil analysis on it, on it, see if there's any contaminating uh, contamination going on, exhaust gases, or um, an engine that isn't running properly. The contaminants that are in the oil that are getting into the exhaust gases, or if you, it's even um, just small amounts of coolant that are in there. They're DOC catalysts. Now, this doesn't go for a Road Warrior catalyst. It goes for an OEM catalyst as well. Um, we just had a client that put a brand new, up in Maine, actually, uh, he put a brand new DPF on it. It failed in three months. So I'm like, okay, we'll send over the schematics. Well, they put they, they put a, a brand new engine, Cummins engine, in, in the truck right from Cummins, but they didn't change anything. He ran the previous filter dry and had a thermal event in it. Well, the, the temperatures got so high that it seized the engine. All that exhaust gases goes into it. Well, he didn't replace the DOC, put a brand new DPF on it. Of course, the filter is going to fail. You've, you've pooched that, uh, um, that DOC with a thermal event and whatever contaminants was happening at that time. Replace the DOC and goodwill the uh, DPF for him. Because we know we're here. We're not here to, you know, rob you twice. We're here to fix the problem the first time. So we goodwill the DOC. Uh, and DPF. So if they would have done uh, analysis prior to that engine failure, they would have saw that there's issues going on, right? And they should have uh, replaced it. One of the big things too that people often overlook, they need, you need to visually inspect the delta P sensor. Now this is the change in pressure between the temp one and temp two. It's uh, There's crimps on the tube or even carbon buildup that could fail that. Now that's done on a cold start. And then obviously the deaf fluid, uh, I'll go back to the Delta P, even a small crimp in that little tube will change it enough so that it derates your truck or it tells it to regen more than it should. So we wanna make sure that those tubes are free of carbon buildup and cr uh, free of crinks. Uh, then you have your deaf fluid, check your filter change history. When was the last time you changed that? If you've never changed it and your truck's five years old, I think, the, I think it's supposed to be changed every two years. There could be on certain applications, there could be two or three different deaf fluid filters, one in the lines, one in the bottom of the tank, the screen on top of the tank, uh, that should be checked as well. And then the other one uh, on a cold, um, a cold engine, um, just look at the tailpipe. If you see black soot on the tailpipes, um, whether it's a bus or on a, on a truck or a piece of equipment, if there's black soot there, the exhaust gases are leaking through that whole DPF because the DPF does work. That's why there's no more black soot. If there's DPF, if there's black soot there, you know that you have a DPF issue going on. It can easily be identified. Yeah, let's bring truck 234 into the shop and let's see what's going on with that before it gets back on the road because that's thousands of dollars that it could save you just by bringing it into the shop. You have to spend a little bit of money to fix it, but it's better than you know a tow bill, DPF, DOC. Uh, SCR replacement and everything else that goes along with it. Next, you have the regen and the forced regen. So what you want to do is you want to download the ECM data with the regen history. Every time it does a regen, the ECM uh, will record that event. This is where you're going to start seeing your good trucks versus your bad trucks, your bad buses from your good buses or whatever piece of equipment is. If you have a brand new truck that only does regens, two to three times a week, two to three times a day, whatever that application is, versus, you know, a baseline. And you start to see other trucks on the same family starting to increase five to six times. This is a good indication that the DOC is bad. Unfortunately, you do have to start somewhere. And if you're not doing it now, then you need to start doing this because this is a good indication and the only practice to make sure that you have a healthy DOC and you ha have your healthy trucks. It's a good way of... Uh, um, of doing that. So you're going to do the regen versus uh, force regen uh, history, and you can start to see the good trucks and the bad trucks that will be able to, you know, hey, we need to give these 35 out of 100 trucks more attention because these ones are running great. On the next uh, year's safety or whenever they're up, let's identify this truck and work on the good ones. The temp pressure, temp and pressure of the flow, uh, these are the readings during the force regen. This is going to give you a snapshot of what's going on. You can also do a voltage test for pass or fail of the Delta, the, the Delta and temp sensors. Um, sometimes the voltage is something that will make that DPF fail as well because the sensors aren't just working. You can have some ghost uh, 
um, some ghost signals as well uh, that are hard to track down. This will, you know, if you're doing that voltage test, hopefully you'll be able to uh, to track it. I'm not too sure if you guys, if any of you do have the ability to purchase a smoke machine. Uh, what this does is put the smoke um, through the exhaust, identifying uh, any leaks in the exhaust system. So exhaust leaks wreak havoc on, on it, uh, on the whole after treatment system. That's the cause for um, death crystallization. It's the cause for um, uh, DOC failure because exhaust gases are going straight in and plugging up that DP, uh, DOC, which plugs up the DPF. Um, in a, and then, so we got to make sure if you do have that machine, use it. It's a great tool. If you don't find someone that has it, that you can borrow it, especially if you have those, um, you know, those uh, finicky uh, trucks that you just can't seem to find what's going on. Could be as simple as a uh, an exhaust leak and the smoke test will reveal that. Um, again, the problem vehicles uh, reveal will reveal poor regen performance right away once you start putting it all together and get your snapshot. Uh, and always use brand new replacement parts on your after treatment system. But if you don't, all your hard work that you just did doing all these these steps are gone to waste. And the reason why I'm sure some of you have used the Reman program and some of you still might use a Reman program. Uh, a Reman filter is a used filter that you've traded in and expect to get something back that's going to work for the same history, the same issues that you had. The only issue is if you were to just keep that filter, get it cleaned by a local reputable shop like Kenworth Northeast, you're able to keep whatever is happening with your DPF in-house and you know what's going on. So purchase a brand new unit as a swing unit, enables you to create your own exchange program, but the DPF filter tells a story, guys, and it, it, it's able to help you out. You know what's going on with that filter. If you trade it in, you don't know what's going on with that filter. And it's very important to keep that. So all that time will be wasted. It's not like a reman part on a, a reman sensor or a reman brakes or whatever reman part you wanna use. When it comes to the after treatment, brand new is the only way to go. Uh, in a pinch, sure, grab a DPF. There's no doubt about it, it's convenient, uh, but Cummins has dropped that program. Uh, there are a few others out there, which I'm sure they'll follow suit. Uh, just based on availability and how the market is right now. Um, and then the last thing you don't want to use, like I mentioned before, is that DOC. The DOC reman, the only thing they can do is clean the filter. And if it's the heart and backbone, why would you want to want spend that money on a reman, a reman DOC when you know that you can't control what happens at that cleaner or even at the reman facility? So always use brand new, uh, brand new filters uh, and DOCs when possible. The after triage and repairs, the next step is the hardest stuff, guys. You need to fix all the repairs and findings, all the upstream engine issues first, and then look at the DOC, DPF, SCR, uh, the DEF fluid, et cetera. Uh, one thing that we do recommend is that you need to create a leader uh, within your group of companies uh, to say, yeah, uh, John's going to be the go-to after treatment person. We're going to get him trained up, give him a little bit more knowledge to make sure he handles everything. It doesn't take long for this to have a huge impact on your bottom line to keep your trucks up and running. Even if you have to use one of the reps at Kenworth Northeast uh, to help you out if you're a, uh, an owner operator, that's what it's gonna take, right? Get them on your schedule, work with them and reduce the, the amount of issues that you have. We do need to train your staff uh, and you need to change those current habit, the current uh, habits that are going on. If there's a coolant leak or a blown turbo and they're not replacing the DOC or you're giving them the ability to do that, give them the, abil uh, uh, the ability to do so because it's going to save you a lot of problems and headaches. But why send a truck out and come back three months later with the same issue and it could be resolved right away? It could become a money thing. I'm not saying that. If it's a money thing, then sure, then you have to do what you have to do. But make sure you're saving up to make sure you can purchase a new DOC when that happens. You want to set up new process for uh, individual failures. If you have the EGR, the turbo, et cetera, uh, et cetera um, those have a direct impact on the DPF and the after treatment system. Replace them right away. Always use brand new um, 
and create your own exchange program. You're putting in all that hard work for nothing. It's just going to go down the stream. And then you have to put in uh, the new triage inspection policy when vehicles come in. This is going to save you huge. It does take some time to implement it and make sure that someone's staying on top of it. But if you're if it's important for you to save money down the road, improve your uptime, these are the steps that are needed in order to make sure that your um, your trucks staying on the road. You can identify your weak trucks, keep your strong ones going and make sure that you fix them correctly. It's a pain to start it, but these are the steps um, that we need to be taken. So that's it for on the triage side of things uh, for that. Does anyone have any questions or something I, I might not have uh, clarified for you guys? So if you have any questions, go ahead and unmute um, to ask, or you can also drop it in the Q&A or chat as well. Yeah, we'll give it a couple seconds. I'll take that as a no, or there could be some questions that uh, we can reach out to after. If you, you want to leave your the email or uh, connect with me directly, by all means, uh, you can connect. Next, we're going to go over uh, a few of our new things that can help you out, especially if you're an owner operator, jobber, um, with, uh, with a few different uh, new products that we have. We have the diesel decoder. Uh, this is a mobile diagnostic tool powered by diesel laptops out of uh, uh, the Carolinas. It's at, at, at sorry guys, <laughs> at base Bluetooth uh, tool uh, to diagnose your trucks. Uh, it's a small little portable device that reads all makes and models. You got on the left hand side here, you small the small little reader that's for uh, Mac Volvo, and then all makes on the, on the other one. Basically, what it does is turns your your phone into um, a mobile diagnostic tool. You can read the fault codes, you can clear the fault codes, uh, you can review repair information, have live access to you know fuel uh, fuel consumption, anything that there's a small chip that reads to the ECM, you can read it. The one benefit right now for a limited time, uh, probably till the end of the year, they've they've enabled it to do forced regens. This comes into factors on many things. You're able to, if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, you're not in a safe place, you can regen the truck to make sure that you can get back to a safe place. Uh, if you're changing your DPFs, uh, you can regen the DPF by yourself and you're good to go. Um, it's not gonna de underate where it's a hard derate, like if you have a NOx conversioncy and you're doing a five mile an hour limp, it's not gonna derate the truck by any, underate the truck, um, but for anything else, it's gonna help you get home. And that's the main thing, right? So it's an inexpensive tool. Um, it's in stock at Kenworth Northeast. We think it's a great tool that you will uh, be able to use. Just think of how close we are to our cell phones now. Uh, you know, we're attached to them. You know, I have a Garmin watch that I use for mountain biking. Um, if I was a driver, I'd probably have this on there, especially if it's out of warranty, you're not paying for their, some people will not pay for that, you know, that common software, the Navistar software. They want to do the repairs themselves. They want to know what's going on. They want to know the fuel mileage, hard braking. This tool is going to do it for you. So if it's interested, it's going to be in stock this week. Uh, Kenworth Northeast, so you can reach out. If you need more info, uh, by all means, this is just an introductory. There's a subscription for like good, better, best. Um, whether it's owner operator, jobber, or full on fleet repair. Um, this will read multiple VINs at multiple trucks all to one, uh, to one user. So if you have a small fleet, you don't have that software, this is a great device to put the power into your hands. Next we've designed, uh, I'm sure some of you have uh, are running electrical APUs. We've designed a lithium battery to replace the AGM batteries that are typically used in electric APUs. So they're designed to work in parallel with traditional lead acid batteries that are working in there. So it's a direct plug and play option. Right now, guys, I can tell you from the experience and all the testing that we've done here in Ontario uh, with some large fleets that uh, go to Florida, Texas, if you are driving down there with the anti idle laws, these batteries will double your power. They'll make it through the night without a comfort start. You're going to reduce your idle time, which reduces fuel consumption. And with fuel, raw diesel fluid, uh, the prices uh, are just going to continue to increase with the scare tactics uh, that are going on. Um, 
how high they're going to go, I don't know. But this is it. You're able to make it through the whole night without a battery, without a comfort start. The drivers are going to be more rested throughout the day. You're going to be more productive. You're going to burn less fuel because you're you're not idling your truck uh, in those ambient temperatures. The driver's going to stay more comfortable because the air conditioning is going to work. And they're going to be able to run all their accessories um, because these drivers, some drivers, that's where they live, right? So we want to make sure that they're comfortable. We've designed this over the last three years. It's tested for cold cycle testing up here in Canada or further out, uh, you know, in Montana right now, they're getting rock full of snow and, and uh, out in North Dakota, um, they're the cold uh, uh, cycle. If you do need more information, get with your Northeast rep. We'll do a presentation with you uh, to learn a little bit more about these batteries. We know it's a starting point for you. If you do have an opportunity, reach out to your rep. There is uh, a special that uh, we'll run with them um, uh, to help you get these batteries and proof of concept. The reason why we did this is because we know, even though we're in the after treatment game, we're here to uh, solve solutions. And this is one solution that we can have a direct impact for anyone running electric APUs. You're gonna get 50% uh, more capacity, be able to make it through the night. Now these batteries are a little bit more expensive than your traditional AGM battery, but you're gonna have 10 times longer lifetime. There's not gonna be any mess or corrosion on the terminals. Uh, there's a lot of benefits that you see. And when a driver spends most of his time running all these accessories uh, on the road, 300 days a year, um, they need these batteries and this technology. So uh, we have a fleet here, um, 700 trucks, and all new trucks that they're getting now are getting switched with their lithium battery technology. And I'd be more than happy to share the video on that, but we've already watched the video, so we won't go there. This is a, a, a quick chart of the blue is a traditional AGM battery that drops down in voltage and then you have an AGM start and if you look at the timeline this is every four hours that en that engine is starting for about 15 to 20 minutes uh, even longer actually two to three almost an hour and then it dies right back down again starts back up or if you look at the lithium battery the voltage stays consistent all the way through and zero comfort starts two to three months you're looking back on your return on investment you have a direct impact on your uh, cost per mile and cost of ownership for your truck this will improve reduce your after treatment related issues that you're experiencing it's going to put uh, money back in your pocket because the fuel consumption is going to be reduced your comfort level is going to increase as well because you're going to be able to sleep through the whole night there's a lot of benefits that we can't marginalize to the price but hopefully that's a product that you'll be able to develop into your program if you do have uh, sleepers with electrical APUs. Next, we have some Road Warrior innovation. Volvo, uh, the top uh, left one here is the weird looking octagon box with the two uh, ports on it. That's a Volvo SCR, Volvo Mac SCR. Uh, we have those. Uh, we have Detroit Diesel 1 boxes. We have three boxes available. Uh, I'm not too sure if you guys know, but uh, there is a shortage at the OE on these boxes, depending on who you are and where you find, you know, you find yourself in the hierarchy of uh, uh, Freightliner and Daimler is when you get your box. Uh, they've really struggled over the last uh, two years, I would say, last July, almost two years, a year and a half. Um, we do have three boxes, but our boxes are also uh on a back order as well just because we get orders every day and we can only make so many so i would suggest getting one in at uh, kenworth northeast if you're running all makes and models uh, outside of the kenworth uh family um, and we can get you that uh, to them same thing with uh, our, our doc's sorry our scrs and our one boxes you're getting the premium uh, doc's and scr catalysts that are in there so uh, you're getting a really great built box and we've improved that improved the design and made some better functions for it if you're uh, on the refuse side of things if you are a waste company we do have combustion chambers uh, a combustion chamber is used in replace of a diesel oxidation catalyst or a doc to regenerate the dpf basically on the left hand side of this or the bottom side of it there's two spark plugs a uh, dozer uh, can always constantly keeps that uh, exhaust gas is hot with a small fire in there to regenerate the DPF. So we have two uh, makes and model those available as well. 
And if you're running some older trucks, I know everyone's trying to uh, get any truck available because they can't get new trucks. But they're they're finding what they can. And you got all makes on there. We do have another innovation on the international uh, Max Force uh, engines. These are very dirty engines. If you remember, they went with a larger EGR. The problem with that is that the EGRs were prone to break because they were a supersized EGR, making that engine very dirty. With the OEM uh, cones that are welded on, you couldn't really clean that DPF correctly. So um, this is one of our best selling uh, features. There's still legs on it now. Uh, they're still out there, uh, but we have a bolted end cap that we're able to remove those cones off. You can visually inspect that uh, uh, DPF and make sure it's clean to get you on your way because they are so dirty. So that's an added benefit as well uh, to those Navstar uh, programs. Oh, sorry, guys. Next, uh, if you do have a lot of um, DPFs uh, stockpiled in your yard, don't throw them away. Uh, there's recite, there's uh, gar money in your uh, uh, in your garbage. So we do partner with Cat Rebates. We don't get a kickback for this. The whole thought process behind it was, well, the re remand program is so strong when it was here that we needed to provide an alternative solution for you to get uh, some money back. So all you have to do is you might see this in the flyer. Uh, in the sorry, in the DPF boxes or DC, DOC boxes, if you are purchasing our product uh, from Kenworth Northeast, all you need to do is text that re that number there, give them the OEM part number. So if you have 40 filters and you have 40 part numbers, they'll tell you how much it's worth. They give you a shipping label and you send it on your way. If you have something going on already at uh, uh, right now, I would still suggest taking a look at it. I do have clients that get uh, two to three thousand dollars more uh, than what they are traditionally using. So. Uh, take a look. It's, we don't get a kickback on it. It's just to keep those uh, uh, the precious group of metals out of the landfill and give you something back uh, to fight that uh, remand program. So sometimes it's not much, but platinum group of metal right now uh, is actually at the highest it's ever been. It's I believe it's over 4,000 US an ounce. So uh, there's more money on the DOC, um, but it's there to, to help you out. So guys, we're coming to an end here. So just to capitalize, if you need more one-on-one -on -one specific training, grab your Kenworth Northeast rep. Let's set something up so we can dive a little bit deeper. This was an introductory uh, level, a um, little bit of diagnostics, a little bit of triage in there, but we can go a little bit deeper for you as well. So partner with your uh, partner with your uh, outside salesman, your, your parts manager. If you need more information, let's work together. We're here to help you out. Um, we have the most DOCs, DPFs, and SCRs available for you. We're the only ones that have Volvo one boxes, Detroit diesels. Um, we have the largest inventory when others didn't have any in inventory. We have the catalyst coating that we're, we're pride ourselves on, with knock sensors, def dozers. Something we didn't talk about, we are getting to EGRs. Uh, they're in the last testing phase as well. We're getting into def level sensors. Uh, we're also getting into the Volvo one box faceplate uh, that holds the DPF that has the handles, if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, and we're also getting into uh, decomposition chambers uh, for Cummins, Packard, Volvo. Those should be out in the fall and the, and the teams will communicate it. We also have the lightning bolt batteries, the portable diagnostic tool. And then we also offer, uh, you know, deeper training than what this introductory program was designed for and create some awareness and help you guys better understand how the system works. So we're here to help. Uh, we can further the discussion at a later date. Um, that's basically, you know, covering uh, what I have to speak with you guys today. All right. Thanks so much, Mike. I appreciate it. And thanks everyone for hanging in there for a few minutes, a few extra minutes. Um, so what you guys can expect next in probably by Friday this week, um, I will shoot you all an email that will have a recording of this. I know there's a lot of information we went over, so you'll be able to go back and replay anything that you need. As Mike mentioned, um, you can always reach out to your outside salesperson, or if you're not sure who that person, who your outside sales rep is, you can respond back to the email that I send you and, and I'll be able to help connect you with the right folks um, here at Kenworth Northeast as well. We'll also include some product information in that email for you. Um, so you'll have some more on what we have to offer here on that too. So with that, um, I'll just really quick 
uh, scan the virtual room. If anyone has any last questions before we go, we'll just uh, give it a quick second. If you want to unmute. Do you want me to stop sharing so you can see the screen? Oh, no, it's fine. I can see it. Okay. All right. All right, guys, thank you all for your time today, and I look forward to following up with you end of the week. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, everyone.